and welcome so uh we'll just go right on and jump into it this evening we'll be talking about seven mistakes not to make as a startup seven things you should not do as a startup seven mistakes you should avoid as a startup first of all what is a startup we're having a conversation with someone and they're like what's the difference between a startup and an sme this is one of the questions that have plagued the minds of many and i'm sure our guests would do justice to that so today we have josiah Edison. he is the founder of ispace accra ghana he is a positioning consultant a business developer he is has worked in the industries ranging from creative startups tech business you name it he has consulted for them and his bio is very impressive and this makes him super qualified, of course, to be the one talking to us about startups, somebody who knows. We're going to hear from somebody who has years of experience in this field. What is the biggest mistake? Before we even get to the seven things to avoid, what's, that, what's the biggest mistake small and, start, small and medium enterprise or startups make? Because there's a statistic that says most businesses fail in their first five years. Right. So um, what's the most common mistake? And I think the most common mistake is not visualizing the growth, right? Not preparing for growth. So, again, when you start your business, you think, oh, it's just an idea and boom. People just probably respond to your product or your service. And then all of a sudden, you've not planned for growth, right? So that can also kill you. And that's one of those things. So by not planning for growth can cause a lot of problems for um, startups or SMEs in that sense because scaling always becomes a problem. So I think that's one of those things and not having enough capital, right? Because money is one of those things that will kill you. The lack of money will definitely kill your business, right? I agree. Um, I agree. So yeah, by not having the right amount of money or plan for it or resources or access to money could definitely kill your business. Okay. So we'll just go straight into it. What are the seven mistakes that startups should not make? This is the part, guys, you want to get your pen and paper because it's going to dish out knowledge and you know you need it because like, after COVID, we need to get our art right. Right. So I will kind of start in, um, in a sense and say that, so for me, taking it personally, that's one mistake, right? So mm -hmm. you have an idea. It's your idea. You started and you hold on to that idea so you take it personally when the customers or the market does not respond to your product you take it personally right that's one big mistake that you you're going to make because remember that you were in the business for the customer to add value to the customer right so don't take anything personal um even listening to your employees um knowing your competition all of those things are one things that you should not do just take it personally do not take it personally yes it's your idea but ultimately you come into business because you want to solve a problem so that solution no longer belongs to you it belongs to the customer that is paying for it so whatever feedback you get you should not take it personally that's one because if you want to fail by taking things personally you will fail so your, your business, whatever you're bringing into the market should be fluid enough to um, criticism, should be fluid enough to yes. people. Mm -hmm. you. So I love my product. I love my business so much. Say right. I'm interested here. I love my product so much. But if people are saying this, 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 I need to include that in my business. Right. And, then, and because they are the ones that are paying you, right? They're the ones that mm -hmm. are purchasing your product or your services. So their point of view is important so you don't take it personally if somebody says oh um let's say you're one of those people that you you you're selling clothes for example right yes. and you, you have a demographic and they say well it's not fashionable don't sit there and cry about it find out why it's not fashionable right True. why it doesn't appeal to them don't sit and go well it's my idea i like it and that's okay no you're going to fail because you're reacting you're taking it personally do not take it personally that's one of the major things for me anyway right that's one number one don't take it personally okay okay so right. was and then number two is underestimating your expenses right and ignoring numbers underestimating oh. your expenses and ignoring your numbers and we always say you have to learn how to budget right because True. and separating your expenses from the company's expenses right because a lot of us when we start up our own businesses 
we like to say, oh, I'm not paying myself. But yet, when we go through your lifestyle, you're spending companies' money, right? So yes. one of the best things to do is pay yourself from that salary separated from everything else. So even if, let's say, you want to pay yourself 50,000 Naira a month, right, under your company, structure it, under, um, you know, Understand those expenses. Know that every month you have to have 50000 for this. You have to have 10000 for that. And understand your expenses. Because you're going to burn through a lot of cash in the first year, two years of any of your businesses, right? So yeah. if you don't understand where your expenses are going, it will be problematic. And understand the numbers. So, you know, sometimes a lot of people that buy and sell things, you... You go to the market, you want to buy something. So then you go, then you have, you just literally just go and spend all your money to go and buy 20 bottles when in reality, you just needed 10, right? But okay. you went and bought 20 bottles for what reason? Because you didn't understand what your customers needed at that moment in time. You didn't understand what products were selling at that moment in time. You're not looking at data, right? So understanding your numbers is very, very important. What you're selling, what products are selling, why they're not selling, don't invest money into them if they're not selling. So these are important um, data that you need to have, right? Don't go and buy 50 different types of shoes when, let's say, three of the shoes that you're selling, um, what, the three of the styles of the shoes that you're selling are the ones that sell the most. Focus on those, right? So understand those numbers and understand where your expenses goes. What you're spending your money on is very, very important. So that's two. Okay. And... Um, Number three is not understanding the role of an entrepreneur, right? Mm -hmm. Now, you cannot do everything in your business. Like, literally, you're not going to be able to do everything in your business. You're not going to be the person that, you know, answers the phones, will do the drawing, will be selling, will be marketing, you know, will be talking to customers, will be pitching, coming up with the ideas, you cannot do all of that by yourself. That is one sure way of failing. Not only that are you going to break down mentally, right? But that's another way of failing because whilst you are there answering the phone, who is you know, building, who's executing the marketing strategy? It can't be you, right? Who's also bringing out the vision of the company? It cannot be you. So you can't be the person doing every single thing. And I know in the beginning of any business, it's difficult. Usually it's just you, right? I was just going to that out. Yes. Right. So what you need to do is handle things that, I would say, structure your business and tackle things as you go on, right? So let's say if you have um, a skill in, let's say, digital marketing, for example, shrink your strategy marketing-wise based on the resources that you have, right? Don't try to stretch yourself too much and then say, okay, I'm the one that's going to go and do Facebook ads. I'm going to go here. I'm going to do that. And then call meetings that you know. Have 20, 30 meetings in a day just to be busy because you want to be busy. No. Understand that you're the only person that has been able to go, sell your vision, tell people what it is that you do. Be in a, in a situation where you can convince people. So, again, find a team. Right? Find a team. People that will believe in what it is that you want to do. Talk to mm -hmm. them. Um, look at their skill sets. Look at the skill sets of the people that you're looking for. So if it's marketing, don't talk to your friend just because it's your friend. Talk to somebody that has a skill set that you're looking for. And then mm -hmm. pitch your business to them, right? Bring them yeah. in. If you can't afford to pay them, let them understand from day one that you cannot afford to pay them. So that was number three, right? So okay. number four is avoiding customer feedback. That is... Is similar to number one, right? Yes. Now, do not af um, avoid customer feedback because okay. that helps you improve your product. And customer feedback can be on the product itself or on the service itself, right? Now, if somebody tells you that, well, you know, I purchased your product and it doesn't do what you say it's going to do for me, right? Don't, don't sit down and be upset find out why um what can you do to improve so you always have to have a channel in which the customers can give you feedback because once you close off 
the feedback channel, you're bound to fail. Because, again, they are the people that can also tell you about what your competition and everybody else is doing. That helps you improve your product, right? So for me, number four would be do not avoid customer feedback. It's very, very, very important. Because if you want to improve, you need feedback. Sorry, go on. Yes, um, yes, yeah, someone just said that. Someone was asking which comments to take. How do you know which feedback is valid and which feedback you should just throw in the bin? Because it's unavoidable. Right. So there is no, for me, there's no good or bad comment. It's what it is that you can improve on, right? Now, okay. if somebody, if let's say you sell um, drinks, for example, you're one of those people that make drinks, right? And yes. you do customer feedback and they tell you that, oh, the sugar level is really high, right? If you get that feedback from a thousand people, right, you know that you need to reduce the sugar content because otherwise they will not buy it and you lose a thousand customers, right? Yes. Now, yes. if you just get it from one person, just one person, then you know that that's not something that you're going to change your whole MVP over because of just one person but if a thousand people are telling you exactly the same thing mm -hmm. right then you need to be able to pay attention to that but if it's just one person and sometimes you can also kind of judge how the comment is made where the comment is coming from because most of the time or sometimes it can also be your competitor that is acting as if they're your customer giving you feedback and hoping that you will mess up your product right oh, so that's, that's why it's good it's good for you to open up your market so that you can get feedback from a varied range of people, right? Okay. Um, mm -hmm. So then that way you are able to then assess the load. Okay, if I'm getting this kind of constant feedback from X amount of people, that means there's something that I need to do about it, mm -hmm. right? So don't always look at the feedback as good or bad. It's about what it is that you can improve on. That's it. Okay. Okay. There's right. a question, I think, based on number, the second thing you spoke about, before we move on and just lose the comments, they said, um, how do you find the right people to help you when you're, when most people are coming in for money? Okay, I mean, that is a good question. Believe it or not, and I'm, I'm sorry to tell you this, people will always come in for the money, right? Accept sure. that and be okay with that. So now your job is how to convince them the right now I cannot pay you what it is that you're looking for. But if you help me get to this point, I'll be able to do A, B, C, and D, right? Now, you then have to make sure that let's say somebody wanted you to pay them um, two th um, 200,000 Naira every month, right? To do yes. marketing for you. But right now, you can afford um, 100,000 Naira. But you okay. really need this person, right? So you can have that conversation with the person. You can either give them equity in your business, right? And say, I give you, let's say, 1% of my business, you know, to offset the money that I, um, I can't afford to pay you. So you become a partner in that sense, right? Okay. Or you, you write a contract, you put a contract down and say, right now, this is what it is that I can afford to pay you. But as and when the business makes sales and the money is coming in, I will increase your salaries and I will increase your wage or whatever. And make sure that you also do it. Because that way, next time when somebody else comes into the business, they will be able to vouch for you, right? Mm -hmm. They will know that you did what it is that you're supposed to do. So, yeah, I mean, as brutal as it sounds, nobody supports your vision more than you do. Even your parents will ask you, are you making money? The first question. Right. But so why do you expect, why do you expect somebody to work for free? You see what I mean? Mm -hmm. So these are the things that you have to, you have to be brutally honest with people where you are financially and where you need to go. And if I think that's what you, they would that Most times people would want to, would, would you just suppose like, oh, uh, just join the team for now. We uh, just speak with a lot of explanations that don't make sense. Right. And, mm -hmm. Yes. And I'm yes, just... so be honest from day one. Tell them what oh. it is that you have, and then they will follow. I believe if you tell people the truth and you sell them the vision, they will follow. Okay, thank you. Okay. Yeah. And number five is stressing about your competition, right? We tend to do that too much. You focus so much on other people and what other people are doing than what it is that you need to do, right? And I think... Um, I could use an example. Permit me to use an example. So when you look at, 
like Usain Bolt, right? The um, the hundred meter runner. Yes. When he steps on the on the track, everybody is focused on him. He's only focused on himself, right? I he's not paying that. attention to the. It doesn't mean that he doesn't know the competition doesn't exist. He's just focused on what it is that he needs to do. He's not going to change his business model because oh, okay. So again, like. When you look at Brandon, right? You change your packaging because your competitor did. But it is costing you more money to do that, right? Instead of finding out from your customers whether they care so much about the product or the branding. So you spend so much money to change your packaging because your competitor changed your packaging. Meanwhile, your product is substandard. Sure. Right? So you yeah. paying too much attention to what your com um, competitor is doing and not enough to what it is that you need to improve on. And now, I mean, yes, you need to understand that you have competitors. Nobody's not saying you shouldn't focus on them, but do not build your whole business about, or should I say, on what your competitor is doing. You cannot do that. Your business will collapse, right? So yeah. do not focus your business model on your competitor. Accept the fact that you have competitors. Analyze what it is that they're doing, but stick to the focus. Stick to your core value proposition, why you are in business. You said you were going to solve a problem for a particular customer base or segment, right? Until mm -hmm. you solve that problem, you, you can't get out of business. So whatever your competitor is doing, it's, it's irrelevant to what it is that you need to do. Because ultimately... The response that you need is from your customer, not your competitor. True, true. Okay? Yes. Is, um, is everything okay so far? Yes. Um, if you have a question, please drop it. If yeah. you're not familiar with any clarification, please also drop that in the comment and he'll address it. I think we can go on while we we'll address that. Um, okay. After right. So, number six should have been number one to me, right? But I'll leave it at number six because everybody varies. Choosing sure. the wrong partner or partners, right? Key. It's really key. important. It's key because your partner or your partners should buy into the vision, right? Should rise and fall with the company. They tend to lose or gain exactly the same way you tend to lose or gain, right? It's a mm -hmm. bit like having a child with the wrong person, right? So your business or your idea is the child. Choosing your partner carefully is very, very important, right? Okay. So yeah. you should not say, oh, um, I'm partnering with A, B, and C, A, B, C, and D because they're rich or they're famous, right? Mm -hmm. they don't, they're not interested in your business. So you partner with them what, what makes you think they're going to sleep and think about your business? And then you'll be there telling them, oh, um, you don't believe in a vision like I do? Yeah, because you just wanted to leverage on my fame to sell your business. It's not something that I'm interested in, right? Okay. Um, right. They're not passionate about the, the business as much as you are passionate about the business. They have their side hustle. They're doing their own thing. They're not, they're not into the business as much as you are. So you have to be very careful. You have to choose a person, or you have to choose people that buy into the business that also have the same idea, ideology, moral backgrounds. Um, for me, I would even say to the point where you probably believe in the same God, right? Same age. Um, if you're married, they have to be married. If you have two kids, they have to be two kids. Kids, same age, everything, right? The only wow. difference is the skill sets, right? So if you are the CEO, which is the visionary, right? They probably will be the technical person, right? They probably will be the, um, I would say, or customer service person, or they might be, I would say, the, the creative in, the, in that sense. So they have a skill set that complements your skill set, right? Okay. But... Mm -hmm line for line everything has to be the same and the reason why i'm saying that is if me and you go into business and we both have exactly the same thing to lose right 
I will respect your views because imagine if I'm married and you're not, right? Now, I need to go home at 8 o'clock because, you know, family problems, blah, blah, blah. But you need yes. to stay in the office too. If you're not married, you can stay in the office too 5 a.m., right? Sure. At, at a certain point, you will get upset. Like, why am I only the in this office and that is a way do what it is that they don't how mm -hmm. often do you meet somebody that's about the same age as yourself with the same thing going on in life as yourself mm -hmm. to partner with that is willing to partner with you because that's right. tricky and, as well and that is a great question that's why you tend to see that the most of the greats always started businesses with Either their friends, people that they went to school with, mm -hmm. right? roommates, um, because that's your circle, right? And okay. usually, you're trying to solve a problem for people in your circle, mm -hmm. right? So yeah. that's how it works. I mean, imagine, um, you know, I want to start off a fashion in, um, business right now. I don't have anybody in my circle that is doing fashion. That means I have to step outside my circle to go and find somebody else that does fashion and all those other stuff, right? So, yeah, yeah. that's where the um, complex thing comes in. But generally speaking, when you look at the history, all the people that have really lasted long or started great companies always started with their friends, people in their immediate circles, people that they went to school with, they've known them for a long time. So it became skill for skill. So if I'm the CEO, you're the CTO, you become the accountant, I could become Matching. whatever, right? Matching yes, they energy. match each other. Exactly. They match each other. And that's how it should, it should work, really. But oh. it's not always going to be like that, but most of the time, that's how it works out. Number seven is not seeking mentors and coaches. Now, a mentor and a coach are two different people. Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. Many times... What happens is people who seek mentors when in reality they're supposed to be looking for coaches, right? So a mentor is somebody that necessarily is not in your business field. So they don't have to be in fashion, right? But it has to be somebody in business, somebody that has life experiences that can guide you. Okay. Right? So, again, let's say you're in business with your friend and things are not working out, right? You're really stressed, and you're trying to communicate something to them. They don't understand. You're always arguing, right? Now, yes. this is where a mentor comes in. That mentor could be your mother, can be your father, can be somebody that's seasoned, experienced person. They don't necessarily have to be in fashion. So the question to the person is, I'm having problems with my business partner. They will ask you, what are the problems? And then you tell them, oh, these are the problems. We are not communicating very well. They will help you, right? Because they experience, so they have that experience in order for them to talk to you. Now, a coach okay. is somebody that's in your, in your industry that understands okay. the mechanisms of how your industry works, right? Just like mm -hmm. in football, have you noticed that you have a manager, then you have coaches? Yes. Right, so the manager yeah. is the one that oversees. So the manager is almost like the mentor. He is the one that oversees, you know, the well-being of the players. Talks to them, asks them, you know, builds, the, talks to you about strategy and all of those other stuff. But the coach is the one that works with you with the practical side of things. So if you come to me and you say, okay, um, I want to do uh, business strategy, for example, right, or marketing strategy, a coach will sit down with you and break it down to the bare minimum everything that you have to do so those people it takes a lot of time that's why most of those people will end up doing what charging you for it because they're giving you the time that you cannot what they can afford to give you the time for free right what mm -hmm. a mentor if you come to a mentor a mentor will be like oh have you tried um putting things on social media you know facebook uh, just Instagram, advice general stuff right yeah but a, a coach will tell you okay if you put something on facebook what is the demographic who are you aiming at what time do you um put those ads out on facebook how are you measuring the success rate all of those other stuff what kind of tools are you using what technology you see they they um they have the expertise in that so they break it down for you right okay so 
you need to get a mentor and you need to get a coach, right? In this, do not be afraid to learn, right? Do not be afraid to learn because you don't know everything. You don't know everything. So your willingness to learn are the key, right? Forget the investor. Customers are the reason why you're in business. So you need to listen to them. Sometimes I will even tell you, don't listen to your investor. Listen to your customer before you listen to your investor, right? Okay. Because they're the ones that are giving you money. They're the ones that are buying your product or your service. So well, will that not be a tricky situation, not listening to your investor? Wouldn't it be a tricky situation? No, because if you give me money to invest in a business, right? And okay. my customers are buying the, um, the, the products and I'm making money, why would you mm -hmm. be upset? If I listen to you and I change the product and they don't sell, you will blame me. So I would rather bring money to the table, right? And then make excuses and explanations later rather than listen to you and then fold. Because if I go and change the product and the customers don't want it, then you, the same person, will tell me, how come you didn't listen to customer feedback? How do you determine the amount of control these investors should have on your business and on, on the product? Right. So basically, it depends on how much of your business you sell away, right? And how you negotiate your deals in the first place. So you can have a situation where an investor can probably invest 50% into the company, right? But they can be a sleeping partner. So they don't have anything whatsoever to do with your business decisions, right? All it is is at the end of the year or whatever, you give them the, the profit share that you decide you're going to give them, right? They're fine with that. Then you can mm -hmm. have somebody that um, invests 10%, but then they want um, creative control on the business. So it ultimately depends on how you negotiate that deal with the person. Okay. So let's say there's Washington, for example, is somebody that you look up to, right? Mm -hmm. Now, you look yeah. up to him. If, if you're an actor, he's your competitor in that sense, mm -hmm. right? But you mm -hmm. have to look at how um, he moves, what, how he acts, how he behaves. All of those things are helping you improve, right? It's not like you, you're sitting there focusing on him thinking, oh, I want to be like that person. No, you're looking at them, but then you're implementing those strategies that they're using to improve yourself. Okay. Right? So that's what basically um, is. You're not looking at them and idolizing them. You're looking mm -hmm. at them and analyzing them. There's a total difference. Right, so to look at them to analyze them is that's not what I'm saying you to do. You need to look at them to analyze them to understand what makes them great and how you can learn from that for you to be able to become better. Okay, analyze, not idolize. Yes, okay. so um, Akin's racket says, What are the two most important things to look out for in partners? Um, I would say the uh, experience right okay. and their moral capacity their moral so how they think their moral dynamics and everything what they believe in right because mm -hmm. what a person believes in is how they act right so for me because you see a lot of these things are we look at external things that ends up biting us in the first place right so if you look at, if I wanted to partner with you, I want to see how you treat, let's say, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your husband, your wife, your kids, and all of those other stuff, right? And I will listen to things that you say. So if you, if you say, oh, somebody gave me money to buy something, and it was like um, 2,000 Naira, but I got it for 500 Naira, and I pocketed the 500 um, the rest, I would be like, nah, I can't well, 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 Right. You see True. what I'm saying? So okay. look at the person's moral character first and then also their experience. Now, the experience cannot necessarily match yours, but then their willingness to grow, to learn, and all of those other stuff will also complement. So, you know, you, might pro you probably have 10 years' worth of experience. They have five years' worth of experience. But mm -hmm. are they willing to listen to you? Are they willing to grow? And in that five years of experience, are they really good at what it is that they do, right? So for me, look at the experience and your moral character and then make that decision on that. Experience, moral character. That's pretty much like picking a spouse in real life. <laughs> there you go. There you go. That's okay. basically what it is. Okay, so this is a mind-blowing revelations, Dami of Lagos. 
Dami, I know. Uh, Odd Kim says, hey, God. So literally, you're speaking the gospel. Someone said, wow, he's speaking. So yes, you're speaking the gospel. <laughs> um, okay. Um, I think the other question is, uh, do you uh, advise outsourcing essential parts of your startup? Not the essential part, no. But I would say outsource certain parts of it, right? So do not outsource the marketing and the branding, right? You have to control that. Do not outsource, um, I would say, the angel room of your business. Okay. You can outsource, let's say, customer service because sometimes you can pay external people for them to yeah. answer phones on your behalf, right? True. But do not outsource the brain of your business. Okay. You see what I'm saying? Okay. Never, ever do that. Like, never, ever, ever outsource the brain of your business because that's how your business idea will run off. And then you'll be there blaming the person. But no, you did it yourself. Okay. Never outsource the brain of your business. I hope that answers your question. Um, thank you very much for this session, JKA Sin. That's from Ozima Faith. We want more. Um, are your sessions available online or via your website? Yes. Um, so I'm very accessible online. Um, my URL or my handle and everything else is always J-K-E-Y-I-S-O-N. So you can follow me on Twitter. I'll answer any questions that you want. I'm on um, Instagram. Ping me. I'll answer any questions. I'm very interactive. So, so if you need any advice, I will be more than happy to talk to you on things. Because I always believe that as entrepreneurs, we can change Africa, right? We can build an Africa that we want to see. And a lot of times we don't have... The necessary resources or the skill sets to execute the projects and those of us that have a little bit of experience should be able to um, mentor up and coming people to make it easier for them because entrepreneurship is hard thank you very much we agree entrepreneurs if you're here we agree so thank you very much <laughs> it's a minute to the top of the hour thank you so much jk for your time no, thank you I'm sure thank a ton you. of people have questions for you. They will be reaching out soon. No but thank you. Thank you very much for having me. And I hope it was okay for everybody. And um, if any questions, follow up, please let me know. Okay. Bye.